Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Let's talk about uh, calculating the center of mass of an object. So if I think about a meter stick, and I said, where is the center of mass of a meter stick? You could probably tell me right off the bat that it's at the 50 centimeter mark, right? It's 100 centimeters to there. If we started at zero, then the center of mass is clearly going to be halfway between. You can probably also tell me that if I have a sphere, like a solid bowling ball, you could probably tell me that the center of mass is right in the center of that sphere. Okay. So you already know some things about the center of mass. But let's say we have something a little more complicated. Let's say we have something that looks like this. Okay, It's an object that is thin at one end and thicker at the other end. Where would you say the center of mass is? Clearly, it can't be in the center anymore because there's more mass on the right <coughs> than on the left. So we take a guess that it's got to be closer to the right side, and it's got to be a little bit higher than the middle, and so maybe in there somewhere. How do you calculate the center of mass? Right? We'd like to come up with a way to generalize the formulas for calculating the center of mass. And the way you do it is the following. The x position of the center of mass is 1 over m times the summation of m sub i, x sub i, and you're going to sum over all the particles i. If you're in two dimensions, then you can do the y center of mass as well, and that is just m sub i times y sub i over all the particles. Now, what does all this mean? M is the total mass of the object. M sub i is the mass of the ith element. Y sub i is the position of that element. Okay, so when you do these summations, you have to pick out every point in the structure, figure out what its y sub i is, figure out what its mass is, add all those up, and when you're done, you divide by the total mass. And you do the same for the x equation. It's just that it's the x position instead of the y position. Okay, so let's see if we can calculate that for an object. Okay, let's calculate the center of mass for a object, an object that has m1 and m2, and it is a distance l between those two objects. So it's a barbell, and we have two point masses on either end of mass m1 and m2. Let's see if we can calculate the x center of mass. Obviously, the y center of mass is going to be right along that line between the two. But how far over do we go? So we go back to our equation for the x center of mass. x center of mass is 1 over the total mass, summation over i, m sub i, x sub i. Well, what is x? x is how far from the origin is the ith element? And what that means is you can draw your coordinate system wherever you want. So why don't we make this simple? Why don't we draw our coordinate system right here? 
where the origin is right at the center of M1, and we are measuring x out to the right. Okay, how do we calculate the center of mass now? Well, it's simply this. It's 1 over the total mass. There's only two particles here, and so the total mass is M1 plus M2. And now we have a summation to deal with, but we only have two particles. We have M1 times its position, X1, plus M2 times X2. And the way we drew this thing, X1 is in fact equal to zero. X2 is just equal to L. And so this whole thing, the X center of mass becomes what? One over M1 plus M2 times, that term goes away, and we just end up with M2 times L. Now, that seems like a perfectly reasonable answer, but let's take a look at the limits and see if it makes sense. Let's look at one limit in particular. Let's say that the two masses are equal. Okay, so this is a regular dumbbell, like, like you might find at the gym. Where is the X center of mass? Well, if the two masses are equal, then the problem is symmetric, and so the center of mass has to be halfway through, right? It has to be right down the middle. So, let's see if our calculation tells us that. It says M2L divided by M1 plus M2, but if M1 is now equal to M2, then we can replace M2 with M1. And so this becomes M1L over 2M1. The M1s cancel out, and we were right, it's L over 2. So in the case where the masses are equal, we do in fact get the center of mass right at the center. If they're not equal, then it shifts to the right or to the left. And if M2 gets heavy, M2 is big compared to M1, then X center of mass goes up, which means it moves over towards M2. And if M2 is small, then it shifts back towards M1. Okay, so X center of mass is somewhere along that line given by this formula right here.